the narcissist and their obsession with karma, nowhere in the Bible does it state explicitly that there is an age of accountability, but there are many implications that people without the capacity to understand certain concepts are given a pass by God, at least to the extent of their incapacity. That just makes sense, being that God is a God of love as well as a God of justice. But again everyone needs to be careful when describing God and we should never overstep our bounds and be definitive about what God's true nature is. We as mortals and created beings are merely speculating. It is an informed opinion since we use the only source available that describes the nature of God, that being the Bible. Only when that accurate source, describing God in terms that humans can understand, is misinterpreted do all sorts of unusual opinions about God manifest. But an accurate view of what life's meaning and purpose for ourselves as individuals is and humanity in general is requires us to try the best we can to understand God's nature. So the concept of an age of accountability does have its purpose. Yes there are Christian covered narcissists, but if they are a true narcopath they are merely putting on an elaborate act. Saying and doing all of the correct things publicly, but having selfish and misguided motivations for all of that apparent piety. Yes, Jesus called out the Pharisees for their public professions of worship. Jesus called them the synagogue of Satan, what better way to describe a religious narcissist, since it has been established that the man behind the curtain for every single covered narcissist is the being that pretends to be an angel of light, Lucifer, Satan. Even if that narcissist is demon-possessed, the being calling the shots is still the devil himself. Even if that narc professes Christianity. Even if that narc professes to not believe in any god at all, and is living as the captain of their own destiny. No matter what the scenario or philosophy the true driving force behind that covered narc is Satan and no other. It gives the devil no end of satisfaction to be the master of someone who doesn't believe he exists. Yes that narc is a puppet on a string and has even convinced themselves there are no strings attached to them. So when we get to the subject of having to pay for our wrongful acts of either omission or commission the narc is first in line to come up with their own self-constructed framework of how others pay for the wrongs they have done. The narc does this by making themselves the god of their own world and therefore only they have the authority to decide what is considered a sin or wrong and only they decide how severe the judgment or punishment will be that is doled out. Any person who fails to see and acknowledge the deity of the narc will receive the harshest treatment of all. Any person who dares to deem themselves even close to, or on the same level as the narc will receive harsh judgment. After all the narc is so far above mere mortals that the narc considers it blasphemy for anyone to speak of the narc as if that narc were their equal and sacrilege if they don't praise that narc and believe every one of their lies without any question or scrutiny. Yes it's considered apostasy if the victim actually disagrees with the strict rules and guidelines of the narc's warped fantasy world, the rules that the narc has imposed on those closest to them. So the biblical concept of a god that makes the rules, is the creator and is in charge doesn't wash well with the covered narcissist. The concept of sin means that there is a standard and that implies that the standard is made by someone other than the narc, a greater being. The narc can never acknowledge that there is a being greater than themselves in their hearts, but the narc will utter all of the right words from their lips, just as long as the core being is allowed to be the actual and true god of their world. No the narc will never give up that reign. So that is the Christian narc as well as narcs practicing other monotheistic religions. But the narc has another option, that of believing that god is not an actual entity, not a being, but rather God is simply an impersonal force. That concept appeals greatly to the narcissist. The narc loves the fact that they don't need to use precious resources on giving the appearance of worshipping what they consider the rigid notion of one great unknowable being but instead they can simply believe in the concept of karma. Yes karma appeals to the narcissist because they can make it an impersonal force and use such terms as what goes around comes around. The narc can define the karma that they create for themselves as male, female, or genderless and totally eliminate the concept of God. If the narc wants to give credence to the concept of God, they can also make their self-created God male or female or no sex whatsoever. The narc can form an idol out of clay or metal and call that idol God. 
In every instance the god of the Nark is a god that is less than the Nark themselves, a god that was created by and given life by the Nark. So in essence the Nark has found the perfect solution in that case. Yes the Nark can acknowledge God without ever considering themselves lesser than or subservient to the God that they create for themselves. So karma is perfect for the Nark because the concept is so ambiguous and open to interpretation that the Nark can literally craft their own personal version of karma and that means this cosmic impersonal retribution is whatever they want it to be. Yes, being that the Nark either consciously or unconsciously considers themselves the master of their environment the Nark has great comfort in knowing that they themselves are the arbiters of right and wrong. Therefore any action of the narcissist is judged by the Nark and the Nark alone. Yes, the Nark and the Nark alone decides what is right and what is wrong and the Nark decides what punishments will be appropriate for any offense. So is it any wonder that the Nark is easy on themselves and quite harsh when it comes to the slightest offense by another individual? Yes those wrongs are sinful even if the actions of others weren't wrong at all. If the Nark perceives something to be wrong it is wrong and the Nark will be the sole arbiter of what the punishment should be. So it becomes clear that the concept of karma, being as malleable as it is, becomes the perfect solution for the narcissist. After all that narc can shape karma to be whatever that narc decides and can shift that definition whenever they feel the need to. So karma is the perfect solution to both absolve the covert narcissist of the most egregious depraved actions and convict any other person of the most minor offense, even if that other person did absolutely nothing wrong. Of course there are occasions when someone actually does purposely harm the narc and in those circumstances the narc viciously attacks, since they consider this an act of blasphemy if that person contradicts them, corrects them, or actually says something that is anything less than complimentary. Yes the narc must be praised at all times, never corrected and never have anything they say questioned. Similarly, any notion any other person has that they are the equal of the narc is an act of sacrilege that requires severe punishment, has severe consequences. Now the motivations of that narc that makes them be compelled to see themselves as God have been covered previously, but the bottom line is that deep down the narc knows they are actually deficient when compared to others, therefore any person that the narc has in their environment has to be downgraded no matter what their accomplishment or the narc's supremacy in their own mind would be challenged. After all a god has no equal, no one can even come close to being at the level of a god and the narc absolutely has to be god to maintain their deluded and overinflated opinion of themselves. So yes the narc never forgets and always has to come out on top. The narc can never be bested or outmaneuvered at their own game of life. That would be the ultimate threat to that counterfeit monotheistic worldview that they have, where there is only one god and they are that being. The narc can't conceive of any of their victims retaining even an ounce of self-respect and self-esteem and the narc is particularly enraged when a previous victim has healed and even prospered in their absence. But even then the narc knows the implications of coming up against someone that has prevailed despite everything they threw at that person. The narc will never acknowledge it to themselves, but they will have to shift their strategy if they are to continue their campaign of destruction. So the narc will seek third parties, flying monkeys, and have them do their bidding. Yes the narc will be miles away when those flying monkeys do their bidding. The narc will entrance, then enlist people from halfway around the world, that they think can't be traced back to them. The narc will enlist any person they know with any form of authority. The narc will do anything it takes to demonize that previous partner by weaving a false narrative portraying that former partner as pure evil. The narc will use anything at their disposal and if it is required put on the perfect act of humanitarian so that they can enlist flying monkeys that are dupes, good people that are totally unaware that they are being used as instruments of evil. The other type of flying monkey is well aware of the evil they are doing so the narc uses different methods to motivate this group. Yes, a narcissist may have been blessed with beauty, so they use that gift given them and leverage it to manipulate some people to do their bidding. Other members of the opposite sex will do what the narc wants regardless of what is asked, because they are so entranced by the angelic appearance of that narcopath. Who can resist a gorgeous damsel in distress? I say this because I do believe such narcissists exist although I can't say I witnessed this personally. 
The person I was with was quite attractive and being that I loved her was always considered the best looking of all women by myself. I told her this all of the time. But the creep took that opinion literally, never understanding that love idealizes the partner forever, because that idealization, blindness to a person's shortcomings, is a function of love and creates a stable lifelong bond. The narc doesn't get it. To the narc, the idealization they bestow upon others is just a tool of manipulation but the idealization they receive from others is justified, self-evident and taken for granted. No, the narc never appreciates that devotion of their partner towards them for what it actually is, simply a function of love, instead for the narc it is merely an affirmation of the obvious, that the narc is superior. The unfortunate truth that the narc may just be above average physically and hardly a catch when it comes to their personality doesn't even figure in for the narc. The fact that their targeted current partner may have had previous partners far superior to them is never even considered by the narc. Yes the victim could do better, but only an arrogant narcissist would think that way. A person who genuinely loves someone makes do with what they have in a relationship and cherishes that with gratitude. Yes, genuine relationships are exclusive. Neither loyalty nor confidences are shared with the outside world by two people in an exclusive relationship. But when a genuine person is in a relationship with a phony narcopath all bets are off as far as the narc is concerned. Yes, loyalty is given to the highest bidder without any consideration for a previous commitment made. Of course the victim has to be fully loyal and committed to the narc, but the narc, being that they are a god is never constrained by those restraints or parameters. Boundaries and rules of conduct only apply to others, never the narc. So here is where many a narc ends up destroying themselves. Yes that narc is a mere mortal, a created being. Yes, there is a higher being. The one and only God. Yes God makes the rules and not the narcissist. Yes, God is patient. So for years the narc plies their trade and refines their lying treacherous ways and for years God is patient. The problem with the narc is that getting away with treachery has made them quite bold and convinced that they have figured out all of the angles of life. But behind the scenes God was carefully observing, carefully noting every detail of that narc's evil duplicity and God was patient. But the narc, being totally convinced of their own godhood lost track of the reality of life, namely that God exists and is apart from humanity and is the creator of humanity and is the one who makes the rules. God has no use for karma, his concept is you reap what you sow and his rules and regulations are not at all arbitrary or ambiguous. Yes. God laid out the things he considers unacceptable, what he calls sin and God's standards don't change with the times or with the circumstances. Similarly God has set up punishments for those who go against his standards of conduct. There is no ambiguity in what is considered right and wrong or who is in charge. There is no ambiguity whatsoever that God created man and God makes the rules. There is no ambiguity whatsoever that man, this earth, and the universe were created by God for his purposes. But the narc has gotten away with so much evil over the course of their lives they are totally blind to reality. The world as it actually is. Yes, for the narcissist the world was created by them for their own purposes. The universe, the world, and those who live in that world were all there for the use and benefit of the narcissist and the narcissist alone. So it then becomes clear why the narc just loves karma. The fickle nature and application of karma will always be warped to fit and fulfill the purposes of the narcissist and always pour retribution on anyone the narc deems in need of it. But the narc is delusional and even though they have enlisted flying monkeys that were fed lies and disinformation the narc is in grievous error and has placed themselves in a contest with the real god. So that narc, thinking they have the universe and the world and karma on their side has no idea of what they are up against and the danger they are in. So then the narc unwittingly walks to a battle with the real God, never having understood his patience and long suffering. That narc never understood that there is a point of no return, an age of accountability, a time when God's patience simply runs out and the need to put an end to the narc's treachery is needed. Yes, the narc is walking into a trap that they themselves have constructed. Yes the narc's downfall will occur by their own hand. 
so the narc is given a free pass. They assault a previous partner, make one threat after another in an attempt to destroy that person, their livelihood, and their psychological stability. Yes, the narc may actually even get a person close to ending it all. But the narc has been given that free pass. They were given the gift of that victim not seeking vengeance, they were given the gift of never having one threat made against them. They were given the gift of no malice to them, other than measures the victim had to take in self-defense. But instead of being grateful, the narc is proud of their own treachery and is now fully convinced of their own invincibility. They gloat about their superiority, but then something unfortunate occurs. The victim doesn't just crawl in a hole and die. The victim fights for their existence and then the supremacy of that narc and their celebratory mood is reined in and to the narc that tarnishes their dark victory. This disturbs the narc greatly. Yes, that narc can never be satisfied with victory and getting away with everything and leaving that victim far worse off than they were before that narc made their appearance. Know the narc, being that they have appointed themselves God and the person who makes the rules, decides that the victim needs to have karma visit itself upon the victim. Yes, that victim has to have further damage done to them. So flying monkeys are groomed and everything at the narc's disposal is enlisted to pulverize that victim and destroy everything that was rebuilt. But the narc is in grievous error. God is watching and his patience has come to an end and that narc is stepping into a trap that will destroy them. But the narc is blind to all of that and marches to their ruination with the self-same arrogant swagger that they always had every time they got away with their treachery. Yes, the narc has overplayed their hand and is now up against the real god. Sadly, no amount of warning will prevent the narc on their path of self-destruction. Yes ultimately the narc will feel the presence of the real god, a god who was far more patient with them than they could ever imagine. So when a potential flying monkey tells the victim karma is coming, here is one response, yes it is. The victim leaves it in God's hands and the narc will eventually get everything they deserve. The Bible calls this you reap what you sow. So when a narcissist viciously attacks and threatens a person that just days previous they told I love you and leaves that person's life broken into a million pieces, never having any remorse whatsoever that narc may think they won and got their revenge. That was revenge for a totally fabricated wrong done to them. The narc may be convinced that their actions were correct and justified. That narc may be convinced that the collateral damage they suffered was their paying for any mistakes that they made. But that narc is in error. Those vicious attacks and threats were never yet even addressed by karma as you say. So then the narc X teams up with another narc, a male friend that suddenly appears out of nowhere and decides to strong arm the female narc's ex-partner. Yes a do-gooder, nothing more than a weasel interloper coward, letters chosen carefully, gets in the way of two people who need resolution and thinks they are doing good for altruistic reasons and makes threats to someone they don't even know. That creates all sorts of unintended consequences. But again the true victim is blamed and the weasel narc feels totally justified. So here is the problem, both of those narcissists have set themselves up for extremely negative karma, I will use your term even though it is inaccurate, and think the fault lies with the victim. The victim on the other hand has moved on, never even making one ounce of effort to harm that narc or the weasel. Yes the weasel was confronted for a man-to-man -man meeting, but he ran to the police. So other than that the ex-partner never made even one threat. The victim has used their faith to overcome that need for getting even. But the narcs, being that they are a narcissists, can't even fathom taking any personal responsibility for anything, so when the narc's life takes a turn for the worse and the repercussions for the abuse they heaped on the victim start coming home to roost, the narc automatically needs to once again blame the victim. But that victim has left it all in God's hands and will remain harmless. The narc that thinks they want another round will destroy themselves. Why? Because thinking themselves wise, they became fools. The fool saith in their heart there is no God. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Just like the Pharaoh in the Ten Commandments who refused to believe in God. 
that stiff-necked attitude eventually hardened their heart and then God made his presence felt. The narc of course will even then refuse to understand that they are no longer fighting a battle against the victim slash target, but instead are coming face to face with the real God, the one and only God. Good luck with that. By the way there is a way of tracing every comment back to the commenter, especially when a carefully selected series of random comments have been carefully documented and chronicled. Yes threats on social sites are no longer considered benign and the repercussions to those who think they are anonymous will be felt, eventually. So yes the knight in shining armor will be the one who does the bidding of a covered narc and that covered narc will be miles away and totally disconnected as her savior helps her. But karma, your term, has a way of intervening in a very palpable way. There is one additional thing to note and that is that no victim should ever leave themselves vulnerable to attack and they should always be willing and able to defend themselves if it is necessary. Although this may not apply to us as individuals in our present situation, never forget that God did command individuals and groups of people to be aggressors in the past, but as victims we should never ever consider anything but being defensive. Our goal is to remain harmless, but be prepared if that narc thinks they will encounter the same mild, ill-prepared, naive person that they originally decided was a good source of energy, a victim to suck dry. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcomed. Peace be with you.